Hey, welcome everyone. We're going to do a session today for yoga for balance. So this is really great to um, just support all of our, um, that sense of equilibrium and balance. And one of the ways we're going to start is we're going to do some ball work. So I hope that you have something like this in your home. It could be a tennis ball. That might be the easiest way to find one. You can also buy these as like yoga balls or workout balls. You want something that's going to be somewhat soft and pliable. And we're going to bring it and down and do some work with our feet. So um, you want to be sitting in a way that's comfortable and you're just going to take the ball under one of your feet. You want to be nice and grounded in your hips. You're just going to start to let the movement of your foot just roll around a little bit on the ball and as you do that you're just starting to let yourself land into your practice today so you're gonna let your shoulders begin to release let your breath begin to naturally open and just taking some time so I'm gonna pick up my foot just so you can see you can continue to roll but we're gonna use this idea of three different sections of the foot we have the bottom section which is the heel the center section, which is the arch of the foot, and then the top, which is the toes and the ball of the foot. And we are working with, uh, one of the ways that we're working here is the understanding of the reflexology, where the different parts of the feet reflect and uh, refer to different parts of the body. So when we're working the foot, all the nerve endings connect to the foot, but they also connect up to the rest of the body. So when we're working the ball of the foot, this is connected to the upper chest, the lungs, the heart. The arch here at the bottom of the ball of the foot is connected to the diaphragm um, below the lungs and the heart, um, and then everything above it. And then when we get to the toes, we're working with the head and the senses and the brain, so the eyes, the ears, the nose, when we're waking up the toes. And as we come down to the arch of the foot, this inner line here is the the reflexology to the spine. So the neck is in the outer edge of the toe, the shoulder, and then the spine coming down into the lower spine and down, down into the legs. And as we come into the heel, we're more in the base of the body and the center of the arch of the foot is more the center of the deep, like digestive organs of the center of the body. So that can just be a little bit of a framework to inspire us as we're rolling out the foot to get those different areas and to just make a, a little deeper connection with opening up the different parts of the feet. When you come to the toes, you can try to just grab the ball a little bit with your toes. You can just let your toes wake up little bit. Sometimes you can try to even pick the ball up with your toes, but you can just wake them up a little bit. Something that you could do every day. It's really great to help open the feet and help open the whole body. And the way that the foot is moving, see if you can also feel that that's helping release the ankle and the knee and up into the hips. So that whole area is just gently getting a nice little opening. And you can take as long as you want on either side. For now, I'm going to switch to the other side. And sometimes, actually, before you switch, it's good to just feel, if you can feel the change of sensation that's been activated through that work. Sometimes there's a little tingling or a little waking up. And then we can come to the other side. Again, see if you, as you're working your foot, if you can also just let yourself keep landing with relaxing your shoulders and just settling yourself into the way you're seated. And letting the ball stay curious with how the sole of the foot feels and the different parts of the foot that are making connection with the ball. Certain areas might feel really good to, to roll out, certain parts might be a little bit sore. Notice 
connections, how that connects also through the ankle, through the knee, the hip, and also how the posture, we can just start to let our posture be more wakeful up through the spine. places that actually feel quite good and then also just continuing to explore the different those three sections from the heel to the arch to the ball of the foot. Again, you can do either side for a bit longer, but for now, we'll just let that be enough. So you can also do just a small amount. And then for a moment after you roll out the ball, just let your feet rest and see if you notice any new sensation through the legs and through the feet. So we're gonna um, take just a few moments here as we're seated to sweep the arms out Feel the breath open to bend the elbows, lift the fingertips and drop the shoulders and elbows back and down. And then if it feels okay on your shoulders to reach all the way up. Make a nice stretch there. And then let your arms come down. And then we're gonna come to standing next. So go ahead and just bring yourself up onto your feet. And one variation that we can also do with the ball, and you might need to stand next to your chair so you have a little support for balance, but you could do a little bit more with the ball from standing when you just take under one foot and you, you'll see that you have a little different quality of pressure here. And depending on what's happening in your body, you might wanna be quite gentle. You don't have to use a lot of pressure for this to be beneficial. Um, or you can lean a little bit more your weight into the ball. But notice the other foot, the standing leg, we're focusing on the balance that's given there, but also the resiliency of how we're shifting the weight around and how that's starting to open up through the leg. So again, you can take as much time on either side as feels good to you. And then when you're ready, we'll switch the ball to the other side. And again, if you need to put your hand on something so you have better balance, like the edge of your chair or couch or counter, then do that. And if you feel okay just having that other leg being your standing leg, and just taking a little bit more time on this other foot, a little bit of places of pressure. different parts of the foot and also feeling how the little way that we're shifting the weight around is starting to open up the ankle the knee and the hip opening up the breath letting also help open up the breath and open up the posture you feel complete just take the ball to the side and stand for a moment on your feet again feeling any new sensation in the feet and then we're going to keep attention in the feet but we're going to also bring attention to the hands and we're just going to let our weight shift a little bit from the heel to the ball of the foot and as you do that as your weight shifts forward you're gonna feel the muscles that wake up through the legs to the pelvis and maybe even up through the spine, but just this letting of your weight shift around a little bit, forward and back. 
So this next, uh, this movement pattern that's supporting our balance, and we're starting from the feet, because if we are actually really in our feet, then we have a better sense of grounding and we're gonna have better balance. And not only that, but if our feet aren't really tight and we're a little bit more aware of the different ways we can spread through the feet and connect through the different parts of the feet, that's also gonna give us a much better sense of balance when we're moving around. So this is a really nice practice for that. So we're gonna keep that happening, opening by bringing our hands next to the hips and letting the knees just softly bend and just start to circle your hips around. Let your shoulders stay relaxed. You can do quite small circles with your hips or you can do larger circles, but start with the feeling or listening for the movement in the feet. So notice how as you're moving through the hips, we're helping the low back and the belly release a little bit and the hips release a little bit, but we're also opening up through the ankles and through the feet. Also opening up through the lower legs and through the knees and through the thighs. Whenever you feel ready, you can also switch the direction of your circles. Again, just notice where your attention is. We want to bring our attention into the circling so we can feel like we were drawing a line with our hips and we want that line to be nice and smooth. And we can also feel the little spiral patterns that are moving through the feet, through the ankles, through the legs. a few more moments to do that again you could switch directions again just look for the place the little openings that are happening in your own body again the movement can be quite small or it can be larger just to accommodate some release all the way through the legs and feet and into the hips and the back as if we're really tight in the shoulders and the neck we can even feel how these movements at the hip are help helping to open up into the back and the neck as well Breath, keep finding a way to open a little bit more into the lungs and into the belly. And then just go ahead and pause for a moment. Great. So we're gonna take our feet just a little bit wider. So about hip width, but a little bit wider. And now we're just gonna focus down into the legs a little bit more. We're gonna shift our weight to one side. And when you bend that knee and shift your weight, you wanna feel the sole of the foot spread and open instead of close and contract. So shifting your weight, spreading open through the foot, and then come back to center, what it feels like to have equal weight on both legs. And then shift to the other side. See if you can feel the ankle, the knee, the hip line up, and look for a pattern that opens the sole of the foot. I'm gonna feel the arch wake up. And so we're just gonna do that a few times slowly. Shift your weight, sink into the legs, and then lift up through center, and then sink to the other side, and look for the spreading of the foot, the opening of the ankle and the knee, and you're just sinking a little bit to that side. Great. So the, I'm gonna come just so you feel like you can also do this to um, come next to a chair, just in case you decide that you need a little support with your balance and you could just put your hand on the chair. So. We're gonna, you can also do it without the chair, but if you decide that you need it, that just that it's there for balance. So we're going to um, come again onto the feet and we're just gonna let the weight come forward into the balls of the feet. And feel that for a moment. What, what are the, you don't have to come so far forward that you're gonna be close to falling, just enough like 10% more weight on the front of the foot. So feel what muscles wake up in the front. And then come into the heel and feel what happens in the back of the leg and anywhere in the back of the body. So just do that a time or two where you come to the ball, the front of the foot, and then you kind of come through neutral foot over the arch and into the heel. 
And then when we come into the heel, we're gonna sink into our legs. We're gonna drop down, root into the legs, almost like a chair pose in yoga where you bend the knees right out over the toes and you sink down. And then when we come to neutral foot, we lit, we're we gonna come to the ball. And if you have good enough balance, you just lift a little bit the heels off the floor. So we're gonna do that a few times where you drop and sink a little more in the heel, come through neutral foot and lift into the ball of the foot. And then come, you can do that a bit more, but let's add the arms. So on the in-breath, we're gonna let the arms come up and they don't have to come up all the way, they can just come up as far as feels good where your shoulder can stay relaxed and then sink down. So the next few times, I'm gonna keep my feet on the floor, I'm not gonna lift my heel, but I'm gonna lift up on the in-breath and then I'm gonna sink and root into the legs on the exhale. When you exhale, feel the action in the abdominals and in the um, lungs where the exhale brings the belly back to the spine. So you're really exhaling and emptying out belly to the spine. And as you inhale, feel that expand. And if you have enough balance to lift, you can lift up onto your, the balls of your toes, lift your heels and then sink belly to the spine, drop into the legs and inhale. If it feels better, you leave your heels down and just let the in-breath bring your arms up. If you feel like you have a little bit more, you could let your arms go a little bit taller as you inhale, come up, and as you exhale, you come down. And then just notice for a moment, you could continue the movement or you could just take a moment and notice where your, if you're leaning in any direction or where your attention is, because what happens often is we have a lot of attention in front of us because our visual gaze is in front of us. So we wanna also center our attention through the whole body and also feel into the back and feel behind us. So notice when you come up, if you can feel like you can center through the whole body and kind of bring your attention in and through the whole body up on your in-breath, down on your exhale. And then we're gonna add one more element to this. So this will be our in-breath and our out-breath. We're gonna add an opposite arm action. So we're gonna come up and just let one arm go a little bit higher up. That's the in-breath. As the arm comes down, they meet at shoulder height and they come down together on the out breath, belly back to the spine. Inhale, opposite arm lifts, and coming back down. So this is really good for the left and right hemisphere balance in our brain. Sinking on the exhale, rising opposite arm goes a little higher. with that shift the variation for a moment but just notice again the sense of balance so imagine that your legs are rooting you into the earth like a tree we get really rooted but there's a little bit of a breeze and you're just going to let your weight move around a little bit like a gentle swaying breeze and I want you to feel the te this te uh, tensegrity in the legs so the tension that keeps integrity through the structure as you shift your weight around. So however that weight shifts is a totally according to your body. You want it to feel good, but you wanna feel those little patterns that wake up through the whole system. So just letting your weight gently sway and shift around and let that wake up through the legs, through the muscles, through the bones, and up through the spine. And then come back to center. We're gonna switch. So when we come to one side, we're gonna give our weight to one side and we're gonna just lift one heel. So the sense of balance. Come back to center, shift to the other side, just lift your heel, sink into the standing leg. Just take a few times to do that, pouring your weight from one side to the other and just lifting the heel on the opposite side. And then we're gonna shift our weight and 
and you can just lift your heel or if you feel like you have enough balance you can also use your chair you're going to lift the knee feel that balance and then come back and you can kind of sink a little bit as we come to center and then come to the other leg and lift through the knee feel your balance have support there if you need it and then come back down and again if you want to you can let your arms kind of come up as your knee comes up and then your arms come down and that sense of a little bit of a sink at center rise into balance with one leg if that's too challenging remember you can always just lift the heel but if it feels okay you lift the whole leg and do that a few more times if you want to challenge yourself when you lift the knee to pause an extra cycle of breath so you stabilize that balance before you transition back to center. You can do that or you just find the pace that gives a good sense from one part to the next. A little bit of balance. These are really good exercises to develop balance, to keep cultivating balance. And then when you feel complete, center yourself again and just notice what it feels like. So one of the things we're cultivating is a sense of our own midline. So as you come back to center, feel the sense of where the center of the body is, kind of the midline of the body, and just bringing attention more into that midline. And the balance between the lifting through the crown and the grounding through the base. So the next action we're going to do is our tree pose. We're going to shift the weight to either side. And again, make sure if you need it, you can hold onto a chair. If you don't need it, you can challenge yourself. For the first part of this is you bring your balls of the foot on the floor, but the sole of the foot is towards the inner arch. And you can either bring the, the hands to the heart. That's a good part, place. And you're going to just steady your gaze on something that is not moving. So maybe something in front of you and see if you can feel that midline. And see if instead of collapsing into gravity, you can root into the leg and feel all the little muscles lifting up to the knee and to the hip. If it feels okay, you can take the foot and put it on the calf. And then from there, if you like, you can take the arms and open them up, up like you were a tree and these were your branches. Reach up, see if you can feel that strength and rootedness through the legs lifting up and through the rest of the body. And then when you're ready, come back down. And just notice the feeling of that. And again, you before we do the other side, again, bring your hands to your hips, or if it feels better, you could place your hands on your belly or your back. Soften your knees, and again, we're just gonna circle few times with the hips. So we want to feel if there was any grabbing tension in the legs as we were balancing, now we're spiraling through that so that it becomes very resilient. It becomes both uh, strong in tone but also able to release and ungrip. So a few more cycles, circling the hips. Letting that circle anywhere in the body where there's tension, let a little movement open through a little breath in the other direction. And then as you come to center again, we're going to switch uh, to the other leg as our standing leg. So take a moment as you pour the weight into the other leg. See if you can find an opening in the sole of the foot and a lifting of the arch, the inner ankle, the kneecap, so that you're stacking through that leg in a way that allows your pelvis to stay balanced and it kind of hones you into your midline. And then the sole of the foot comes, you could keep the ball of the foot on the floor, palms to the heart, or you could bring the foot to the calf and steady your gaze and steady your attention so that you can Feel your balance point here. Again, if you are wobbly today, it's actually a good thing because it's cultivating balance. So it's okay to be a little wobbly. That's how our system recalibrates our sense of balance. And if you like, you can 
open your arms. See if you can stay nice and rooted with your breath coming down into your lower lungs and belly. Nice and rooted through your standing leg and then opening into space. Again, just let your weight shift around a little bit. So now this is nice. We have two feet. We're a much more stable tree. And feel that sense of just being blown around a little bit in the wind. So we can feel how the muscles and the bones are helping to shift and reorganize to keep us balanced, to keep us stacking. And as you start to shift your weight, become more aware of where your midline is or where center is when you come through it. So you might shift from side to side or front to back, but can you notice where it is when you're right in the center and then you move off of it and then where it is when you come back to the center. And then just let yourself rest into that midline, into that center, even though you can keep allowing the little movements that recalibrate your weight. And we're gonna take a moment to come up with our attention into the chest and into the upper back and take a few moments to just circle the shoulders. So when we're doing this movement, we just wanna feel still very supported through the legs and the lower body, but we're tuning into whatever we're feeling today in the chest, in the back and the shoulders, and see if your movement can be a way that that tension in that area can just start to slough off a little bit or circle and release a little. direction. Again, you can do really small movements with your shoulder or you can do a nice big circle with your shoulder. And just a few more moments, however your shoulders want to move. They can move together, they can move one at a time. And then just resting your shoulders away from your ears, let them settle, and feel that nice support all the way down through the lower body, and the lift that comes up through the back of the neck and through the head. And we're gonna do just a little bit for our neck here. So for a moment, just let your head gently move forward a little bit. So the chin is gonna drop and the back of the neck is gonna become long. And then you're gonna let a gradual lift where you lift the chin up, let the front of the throat open. Shoulders relax, breath stays nice and released, and just do that one more time. Nice and easy movement of the head forward. You can relax into that, a little stretch. Sometimes if we have a lot of tension from the ear to the shoulder, you could even just take a little tiny movement with your chin once the chin drops and see if you can get a little more sense of releasing in the back of the neck. And then as the head comes up, lift. And then you're just going to come with your head and let it balance on your spine. And then we're going to do the opposite, a different variation of movement with the neck where your ear one ear drops to the shoulder and one ear lifts up. And then you come back to center. If you get tired of standing, you can do these movements with the upper body, the shoulders and the neck from seated position. So you could come back down to sit. Do that one more time, letting the head drop from one side to the other and notice the response of that down through your spine and your chest. Notice any little releasing through the jaw or through the neck. And then as the head comes back up, let it find that place where you're balanced right over the chest. So sometimes we'll tend to have our head always a little bit forward or have our head a little bit back with the chin lifted. So see if you can find that place where the back of the neck can be nice and long up through the crown and the chin is balanced. So the roof of the mouth is also balanced. And then the last movement for now that we'll do is just this circle where instead of dropping the head we're just doing a sh uh, uh, keeping the head upright and just drawing a small circle with the crown of it. 
opening up the neck, but letting the shoulders stay relaxed. And then going the other direction. If you can find a way to move here, and if, if this isn't a comfortable movement for your neck, you adjust the movement so it feels comfortable and it feels like a smooth quality of movement. So try not to make it so big that it crunches a lot. You want to stay within the range of motion that feels good and that opens up a smooth quality of line from one part to the next. And then we're just going to come back up. Do one more before we close. So we're gonna do our spinal stretch. So hands to the front and the top of a chair or a couch or a bench. And then just let your hips start to walk away from your fingertips. See if you can feel a nice opening from the tailbone through the crown of the head and a nice settling in your shoulders. Just a breath or two there to allow a nice stretch to open. rest let a little bit of movement happen if there feels like good movement would be helpful in the body and then as we close take a moment just bring your hands together and feel the sense of the balance of this movement so we're bringing the hands together the left and the right to the center and feel the way that you're also really hopefully a bit more present now in your lower body so you can feel that sense of connected into the earth and also feeling the head that lifts up so we're connected upwards so the balance of above and below the balance of in front of us and behind us just this another breath or two to just feel the sense of coming back into what feels like our center wherever center feels like just pouring our attention and pouring our breath back in center and then as homework for this it's really great to just feel from this place of centeredness to do some really um, very easy walking so not something that you have to do in a quick way but that you can just start to from this sense of being balanced just start to like shift your weight around and just take some more movement where you can walk a little bit, but you're still being aware of wherever center feels like for you. So you're moving away, you're letting your center be a moving dynamic experience rather than a, a static experience. So I hope that's helpful and um, enjoy ex experimenting with dynamic balance and what it is to move from a place of deep centeredness. And uh, wish you well, have a beautiful day.